You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is Rob, and this is episode number 1013. Thank you for hanging out with us today. We really, really appreciate it. Hope you're having a great summer. Hope you are getting a lot of flying and hope you continue to build your business. Hope, hope, hope all the best for you. Interesting question. That's what she said. <laughs> I don't know what to do with that. That was a terrible joke. <laughs> anyway, continue um, on. Yeah, no, it is an interesting question because I think uh, it's funny because in our walk and just kind of the conversation about this. Um, we went a different direction, and then all of a sudden you throw out to me, uh, and you'll know what I mean by this in a little while, Inspire 2. <laughs> but we hadn't talked about that, but I get it. But it just came out as you were thinking more about it, I think. So anyways, I'm excited to dig into this with you, because uh, I think a lot of people will get value this, out of it. Look, okay. If you want one of those shows where I get fired up, then you're in the right spot. <laughs> <laughs> because here we are with another crappy problem that's thrown on people who are spending enormous amounts of money on enterprise equipment, yet not getting the basic features out of the drone. Just did a big webinar about this, the X-T2 on the M600 versus the M210 and what drones to buy. And I actually said the very best drone to buy, if you can spend the money right now, is the Inspire 2. If you are trying to bootstrap your business, and you, you're not going after you know action sports productions or productions where you need to handle lots of wind, meaning you're moving at high speed, you're doing subject tracking, whatever, then build your business on a Phantom because it can do mapping, it can do video, it can do high quality photos. It literally is the trifecta. The only issue with the Phantom is that it can really only handle flight at 40 miles an hour. Once you get beyond that, you get some gimbal shake, especially when you're moving laterally um, and you can't do some of the more complex maneuvers, which is why I say, you know, go with the uh, Inspire 2. But like I've learned on my expedition, the Phantom is like the XLT and the Inspire is like the limited edition. Mm. And the main difference therein is the cost of maintenance, which is astronomically higher for the Inspire 2. But um, if you're wondering why I'm so adamant about the uh, enterprise problem, it's because I actually am worried, uh, and I haven't been able to prove this yet, but I'm extremely worried that these enterprise drones like the 200, the 210, and the 600 are actually holding the industry back because you have departments who they work on a two to four year budget cycle, right? They get, they get 20, 30, 45, 50, 60,000 dollars, but that's all they get for four years. And they're supposed to uh, buy something, create a system out of it, and prove the effectiveness of said system. Is it saving us money? Is it uh, you know, building revenue? Are we getting data analytics faster? What's going on? But these major systems have such fundamental flaws that they can't do a lot of the smaller things that, you know, very simple things like point of interest mode that these other drones can do. Very simple things like controllable aperture, which these other small drones can do. It's honestly like, you're paying more to be handicapped. And I just mean like handicapped in a race. Sure. Um, that being said, it's just extremely frustrating because if these departments spend a, a lot of money on these M200s, these 210s, and the M600s, and then they're not finding them useful or the value add is not significant enough because of the issues with scalability, the issues with having to buy extra additional equipment to do the same thing that the smaller drones can do. I think that these systemic problems will cripple drone programs at Fortune 100 and 200 companies that could actually cause a retraction of drone services as a whole and hurt the industry as a whole. Now, mm. we're seeing that more and more companies, infrastructure-based companies, Fortune 100-based companies, and even public safety units are ditching the enterprise series as a whole and going to smaller drones. In fact, we've had some callers call in and say, we're using the Mavic 2 Dual and we're using a Phantom. We're not, we decided to sell all of our other equipment and just use those. We've been doing some uh, consulting and some enterprise training with some infrastructure um, uh, companies, and they literally stay away from the 200 like it's got leprosy. So, I mean, this is something that I've been wanting to communicate for a very long time, and I haven't really had enough information or time to actually create an argument that hopefully will not fall on deaf ears with DJI and, and other um, 
drone ma manufacturers. Because seriously, if someone wanted to come in and disrupt the entire drone industry, all they would have to build is a Phantom with a global shutter or a mechanical shutter that had interchangeable lenses with a pretty much a CMOS size sensor. So like a DSLR mirrorless size sensor, and you would absolutely kill the game. Hmm. Just murder the game. Like you could overtake in all of DJI's business if you had the easy and convenient, easy to use features, but you also had intelligent flight modes, global shutter for mapping, but it was also good for video and photos and you had interchangeable lenses. I mean, you would destroy the market. And there are two manufacturers who are in the process of doing that right now. So, well, that must be more difficult and or more expensive than we think to actually make happen because it seems it would have happened by now. And I know there are people working on it. Yeah. And uh, and we're hopeful that competition will come. But in the meantime, it's not there yet. So what are these problems that people are having with enterprise equipment? Well, luckily this question came in and it was not premeditated by us. These are real issues that people are facing. And I think you need to hear this. People need solutions that don't handcuff them when they're spending more money on a drone than they are a vehicle. And they're still not able to do some of these basic things. It's going to hurt the industry. So I think the greater good is to educate these people and say, look, drones are still the solution, just not these super expensive ones that claim they can do all these things that they can't do just buy these drones. Hi, Paul and Rob. My name's Jason. I'm with United Tower Alliance. We just upgraded slash replaced our Matrice 200 with the new version 2. We're running into a problem, and I'm hoping you might have a solution. Also, I hope this might go as a public service announcement to anyone looking at purchasing the version 2. So here's the problem. The version 2... Matrice 200 does not work with any iOS apps on the iPad. I've had it suggested to test with an iPhone, but I don't have one of those and nobody here does either. It does work with the Android, but, and, and this is a huge but, it only works with the DJI Pilot app. Uh, now, we used to use the Go4 app and the point of interest flight option for doing tower mapping and models. The question in all of this is, do you know of any third-party data collection apps that have a good point of interest option that runs on Android and supports the M200 V2 with the X7 sensor? Now, I did reach out to DJI. Their response was to use the GS Pro app with the additional paid point of interest option. The problem there is that the GS Pro app only works on iOS, and as I stated earlier, the version 2 is not currently compatible with any iOS devices, at least that I can find. So, thank you. Sorry for the little bit of a rant. I'd love to hear what you guys have. Thank you, Jason. And uh, if that is a rant, that's a pretty mellow rant. Um, I think you're just kind of expressing some frustrations with the challenges that you're having. But... Any solutions for him? So I actually did reach out to two other people. Uh, one of them is actually a trainer for uh, DJI. And um, they said that uh, it is confirmed the M210 does not work with iPad, iPad devices. Um, as far as the iPhone stuff, I have not been able to corroborate that just yet. I was able to prove, though, that the M210 does not have an orbit mode at all. Um, at all uh, when it comes to D using DJI Pilot. The other thing that is actually interesting, as I sit here and think about this and just talked about the iPhone issue... The whole reason that we bought the iPad was to use Ground Station Pro. I mean, we recently uh, lost an iPad, had to get a new one. Um, and the long and the short of it is, is that um, you can't use Ground Station Pro on an, on an iPhone. So to do tower inspections, even in our cell phone tower inspection class, we talk about using vertical orbit mode through Ground Station Pro. So if you can't use the M210 or M200 in Ground Station Pro with vertical mode, that's literally a useless drone. It's 100% useless um, because I know that Ground Station Pro, it's iPad only. It does not work with the iPhone. So that answers his question about the iPhone right there. Uh, the DJI Pilot app does not have a point of interest mode either in the Crystal Sky version or in the iPad version or in the Android version. So point of interest, another basic feature that you would expect to have 
is not available. Now he said, you know, I want to be able to use that on the X7. The original M210 and M200 did not work with the X7. Could you actually physically plug it in and like see a feed? I could, but we could never record because there's no way to record. Mm. The new V2 is supposed to have an onboard recording, but I haven't seen anyone using the X7 on the V2, so I do not know if that works or not. But this goes back to the webinar that we are talking about. We cannot say which clients are doing this because they'll get singled out by drone manufacturers and companies. And also, we we have a contractual agreement that we can't say who it is. But long and the short of it is, is that a lot of our enterprise clients are going to the Inspires, whether that's the, actually in the Inspire 1 or the Inspire 2. And the cameras that they're using for these, these inspections is one, the Z3, but the Z3 doesn't work with any mapping stuff, or it's the X7 with the 50 millimeter lens. Hmm. Um, in fact, I want to buy one of these lenses um, just to uh, practice more detailed mapping, you know? Yeah. Um, so that being said, um, I don't know what to tell him. I think he should sell the drone and get an Inspire 2 because he can use Ground Station Pro through an iPad. Yes, you're going to have to buy an iPad. And I've told everyone before who's come to a mapping class, I know that there are a lot of people who like using Android, but we've just noticed that there's a lot more glitches with Android because you have to use whatever app it is and then the Control Plus DJI, which is a separate app, which is an intermediary. And literally, it can be so nuanced um, that if you don't get the actual... Um, workflow correct about which app to open first mm. that it could actually cause a glitch to the whole thing not work at all so i really try to tell people like don't use android when you're flying dji stuff it is literally made to work with apple yeah that just so, adds layers of complexity that uh means more problems just it, yeah by nature and it's it's not like an android versus apple thing like yes i'm an apple user but i have an android phone too it's just a backup phone um, and the thing is, is that like, again, these drones are made to seamlessly work with Apple and you can fight it all you want, but at the end of the day, do you want your system to work or not? So a very common workaround that I tell people to get, in fact, I should have bought one of these, but we needed ground station pro. So I did not Um, but is the, uh, the old, the new iPod it's mm. the, or the iPod touch. Oh, it's right. a $200 pretty much iPhone 10. Yeah. I mean, literally, it's like a $200 iPhone 10, and it just doesn't have cellular service, but it can do everything that your phone can do. Right. So that's an option for people. The reason that I think that he, with cell phone towers, you've got to fly close enough that you can get detail, but with point of interest mode, if anyone's flown it, you know you have to have at least like a 15-foot radius um, to fly that. So again, that's why they're looking for the 50-millimeter lens to get that zoom. Right. So again, he, you know, if he wants to do tower inspections, which... We actually just had someone reach out to us. I, weren't you telling that story yesterday? They own like 1,500 cell phone towers or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and again, oh no, that was Jake. It was Jake Levesque who was talking to us Seems about like we that. had someone reach out to us about that too. Anyways. Anyway, yeah. long story short is, is that they're using Inspires. They're not using the M210s. And I think that this has just been a mistake of DJI trying to segregate the market to capitalize more on specific enterprise-grade products, a lot like what Apple has tried to do. But if you cannibalize the market enough, it's such a fine line that you could really push people away from individual products. And, you know, look at Unique. They're really pushing for enterprise as well with the, you know, uh, what is it, the uh, H520RTK. And, you know, talking about another issue, is the M210 V2 writing the RTK data to the TimeSync app? Is that actually working for RTK grade mapping? Uh, last time I checked in on that, it still wasn't. So there's mm. a lot of promises with these 200s and M210s. I think really the title of this podcast should be, should I buy an enterprise DJI drone or a different drone, a different DJI drone? Right. Um, <laughs> like, yeah. you know, it's not like we're pushing D people away yeah, from DJI, DJI drones. Yeah, DJI can't get completely mad at me because I'm like, just don't buy the M210, buy the Inspire instead. Like, right. <laughs> yeah, it's a two thousand dollar difference, you know. But hey, at the end of the day, what works is is what works. So, and I think that's what's important here. So, should you buy the M two ten or two hundred? No, get a literally buy it and inspire. Unless you have to uh, use thermal, then then maybe buy an Inspire one and use the old XT because the new XT doesn't work on the Inspire two for whatever reason. It would actually be really interesting, Rob. You know, as I sit here and think about this. You could make a significant company out of buying Inspires, 
fully unlocking them, adding more features, and then reselling them to the market as a custom setup. Hmm. Yeah. Because like all this, all the limitations are software limitations. So you could essentially sell them for the amount of, say, an M210. Well, think about this. Right? If you could get an XT2 to work on an Inspire 2, and it was like unlocked, you could literally sell a $5,000 Inspire 2 for ten grand, Yeah, exactly. And people would still save money. <clears throat> right. It, it would be a bargain. <laughs> anyway, sorry, these thought processes I'm having with you guys and girls while we're on the show. But um, and do we miss anything? You think we covered it all? I think so. Yeah, I think that uh, that certainly covered what he was talking about, and then and then some. But obviously, like we always say, if we miss something that you were uh, wanting to hear about, let us know, and uh, we'll come back to it. Happy to do that. <clears throat> By the way, if you are looking for an enterprise drone to do uh, high level zoom and uh, thermal work, I would recommend you check out EasyAerial.com. On that bombshell, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Drone You. 